And I can't tell you how much um, support we have felt and have appreciated, um, uh, not just in terms of collaboration, but, but, um, but in terms of uh, brotherhood, you know, family. And uh, Brent, so you're so appreciated uh, by the community in Lakeville Corner and beyond. And I know I have family on here as well. And just um, anyway, just really appreciate that. We are, we are reading today from Mark 4, uh, 1 to 20. I've come out of my virtual office. I'm in the real person here now. So you might see Louise in the background as we go. And uh, we're going to be reading, um, again, continuing on in Mark. And the message today is talking about receiving the Word of God. And um, this message probably is, is for me personally. I, I find that during the week as I'm prepping that, um, and, and reading Scripture that most of the time the applications come back to me personally. So today, um, if you've got a pen or a pencil along the side, you may want to make some notes. What does God want to say to you and I today in these times? Um, and I want to give a little background to Mark 4 that we're, we're reading from. And this is a time when we, in the first part of the, some of the other messages we had in Mark, we talked about the opposition that Jesus actually received from the religious leaders uh, of the day. I mean, he was doing things uh, they weren't comfortable with. He was uh, claiming to be God. Uh, he, was, he was healing. Uh, he was healing on the Sabbath. And, um, you know, the synagogues were, uh, were a challenging place. And we see a, a moving out. Um, Jesus' ministry moves outside the synagogue, and he is teaching by the lake shore. And we see larger crowds gathering around him as he's, uh, he's, as he's preaching and teaching from a boat. And, um, and he's speaking in parables. Um, parables are kind of, kind of interesting because um, parables are, they weren't a new method. Uh, many teachers, uh, and even in the Old Testament, used parables. But they were typically short stories that, that uh, engaged a comparison. And a comparison being something earthly with something heavenly. And uh, these stories were to get people's attention, but to drive home a message, to get people to think, to reflect. And as we go in today, I, I'd really like for us to um, consider this parable. This is the longest of the parables. Uh, and it's, uh, it's one which um, we probably can identify with in terms of, uh, you can just imagine that Jesus was in this post preaching, and he may have seen someone actually the a farmer the uh, someone sowing seed uh, and uh, given that we're sowing some seed this time of year in gardens and so on uh, this this is the picture is not far off but we're not just looking at the the physical story of what happened we're looking for spiritual truth within this now we often hear in the New Testament that Jesus spent time revealing mysteries about the kingdom and so in this parable, we actually, it is actually meant for, to open up to us uh, Jesus' thoughts about the kingdom. The word kingdom actually means God reigns. And it talks about not a political rule, but it talks about a spiritual rule. That Jesus came uh, not, just, um, not just to save, but to redeem us. And uh, this in the New Testament is called the Good News. Jesus wants to reign in our lives. He wants to have a heavenly place. Our Father, which art in heaven, we pray, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The reign of Christ is the reign within our lives. And I think today Jesus may have things to say about our lives and his kingdom. How does he become involved in our lives? And we're going to spend some time uh, as seeing Jesus in that boat, teaching the parables, um, speaking about the, um, the parable of the sower, and really revealing to us the heart of God about the kingdom of God. And uh, I've asked Brent if he would read for me this morning, uh, actually, Mark 4, 1 to 20. And as you go through it, there, there are different parts, and you've got to keep these in mind as Brent reads. The farmer, the one who teaches, preaches, or shares. And, and some commentators have actually said this may have been Jesus himself 
but also can apply to those who teach and share the Word of God. The seed, the Word of God. And you'll hear about four kinds of ground, which talk about how do people respond to God's good news? How do people respond to the kingdom of God as Jesus explains it? And in some ways, those soils, as we talk about, are going to reflect the conditions of our own hearts. How ready are we to listen? So the message today is entitled, Receiving God's Word. And um, this is a question I pose to myself. So the I is not meant for you. It's meant for me, or maybe both. Am I listening to God's Word in these days? Do I hear his voice through scripture? Do I understand what the implications are for me personally, for my family, for my marriage? And I, am I open to him? And I just want to pray before Brent reads. And, and, uh, and, and I want to ask that God would open our hearts to the message that he has, not what's coming from me, because I'm a broken vessel, you know? Saved by grace. I was so glad when we read that first scripture, you know, in Christ, my sins are as far as the east is from the west. I can't think of anything better because that's his, that's his grace. That's his love. But I know that every day, every week, I need to come to him and say, Lord, where are we going? And really listen to him. So let's just pray before Brent reads our, our scripture for today. Um, Father, would you would you speak to us this morning? Would you open our hearts, Lord? It doesn't matter whether it's church leaders or family members or people just on, on the call today. I'm asking, Lord, that you would prompt in our hearts through your spirit, um, your word, specifically for our lives. And, and Lord, we ask for a move of your Holy Spirit. Begin with us. And I ask that today, Lord, that someone will be encouraged by the words that are spoken, encouraged to follow you, encouraged to have hope in you. So this is our prayer this morning, Lord, in, in, you know, in the remaining part of this service. So, Brent, if you would read just with that backdrop of Jesus preaching from the boat, speaking about the kingdom. Verses do you want? One to 20, you said? Yeah, you can read one to 20, and I, and I will preface it. As Brent does, there's three parts to this parable. The first part is, is the teaching that Jesus gives. The second one is kind of a side conversation with his, uh, uh, with his disciples about uh, how important it is to listen, and then he provides an explanation. And, uh, and if you don't catch it all in, the, in here, we'll be walking through it uh, uh, in a very concise way today, uh, the meaning of this parable. So thanks, Brent. Okay. Mark 4, 1 to 20. He began to teach again by the sea, and such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got into a boat into the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was by the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables and saying to them in his teaching, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. After the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Other the seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. And he was saying, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. As soon as he was alone, his followers came with the twelve, along with the twelve, began asking him about the parables. And he was saying to them, To you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. To those who are outside, get everything in parables. So that while seeing, they may see and not perceive, and while hearing, they may hear and not understand. Otherwise, they might return and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. 
These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. In a similar way, these are the ones who, uh, on whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. They have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. And when the affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word. The worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter into and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. Thank you, Brent. So that's a that's a fair stretch of scripture there, but we're going to we're going to work through this here. And I'm just wondering, and it'd be great to I won't ask for a show of hands, but I know a number of you are out doing your gardens. And um and we, we haven't attempted a garden this year, but we did have some, um, some friends of ours who returned to the States, uh, a couple of missionaries uh, that have gone home on furlough, uh, Seth and Brittany, and they asked us if we would keep their plants. And uh, I said, you know, uh, probably what will happen is that um, we will kill your plants if you leave them with us. I mean, that would be my, um, uh, my skill in terms of, of planting. So... In any case, here we have the story of a farmer who is sowing, sowing seed. And, and again, as he sows seed, he is, he is spreading it. And, and, uh, and some of the seed, now we have to realize the seed itself is good seed. The word of God is good in all cases. And the scripture tells us that the word of God never comes back empty. When it goes out, it always has an impact. So the word is good and goes out. And, but here the, the, the word falls in different places and there are different responses. And the first one, as we begin, we call, we'll call it hardened ground. And as he was scattering, some fell on the footpath and the birds came and ate it up. And this is in verse 4. And you can see verse 15, which follows it, is actually Jesus' explanation of that part of the parable. In Palestine, the fields were in the form of long, uh, narrow strips. And these strips were divided by little grass paths, which were the right of waste. And these grass paths actually became beaten down, almost like stone, by the feet of people that used them. So you can just imagine these rows where the seed would fall in order to grow, but some would fall on the path where people have walked. And, of course, the seed uh, would fall on a hardened stone foundation and, and again would not grow and so when you think of the idea of heart say and i think today as we as we talk about the need for god and and really right now i was speaking with a chaplain a little earlier on and he has um, actually led several people to christ over the last three months uh, and he has baptized them and so on he said i'm seeing a move of god people whose heart were hardened are now becoming softened. They're listening. And sometimes when there's a change to our schedule, when something happens, it does shake us a little bit. And what seemed to be very stable is not as stable as it used to be. And in some ways, that's really a healthy response because at the end of, end of the day, the only thing eternal is what we find in Christ. Um, it's interesting here, it said the seed as Jesus explains, interprets the parable, he says, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. Um, as believers, uh, we know that the devil it counters uh, all that God does and all of God's purpose. In Luke 22, 31, 32, as you can see on the screen, Jesus told about Peter's denial and he, he said to Simon, Behold, uh, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. That doesn't sound very good. But I pray that your faith may not fail. And when you've turned again, strengthen 
your brothers. And the amazing thing in Peter's life is that we saw Jesus do amazing things. He forgave him, even when he denied him, put him back on the right track. Um, but this is the intent of the enemy, is to um, really to blind our eyes and to keep us from, uh, to keep us from following him. Um, Psalm 14, 1 and 2 says, Only fools say in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. You know, I think when we talk about having hardened hearts, we, we often think of the, the notion of someone that is, is very anti, that pushes away even the notion of God or pushes away things of faith. And that may be the case. But I think what we see oftentimes, even in Jesus' day, was an indifference. We have our life, we have our routines, we have our relationships. And when the Word of God is planted, when the Word of God is presented to us, when, whether it be in Sunday school or preaching or just reading God's Word, it doesn't really penetrate. I know there are times when um, Louise has things she wants me to do around the house, uh, things I need to listen to. When I get absorbed in a task, I am so focused on that task. And sometimes it will be one, twice, you know, three times that I'll be asked because she wants me to, to, to stand up and listen. And, you know, I think sometimes um, in our lives that uh, if we are indifferent to faith or faith doesn't really matter or I haven't thought about God, this really is, um, is like having the seed being taken away or stolen away from us. So today, if you haven't thought about God, if you haven't thought about what he means in our lives, or God has been compartmentalized to Sunday, I want you to think right now how our lives have changed and the importance of our faith and eternal things. You know, families um, have come together during this time. Some families have experienced some additional stress as well. But we've also seen some good things come forward, and that includes a renewed focus on, on Christ, on his word. So as we go on, James 48 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. See, this is his promise. We want to come close, then draw near to God. Reach out to him. And you, you'll notice it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. You know, really what it's saying is, as we come into the presence of God, there is a sense of, you know, we have been away from him. Imagine being indifferent to God and then suddenly saying, Lord, I need you. And then saying, Lord, I've been away with, from you. I, I, it's coming to mind. I'm starting to understand. And this is humbling ourselves before the Lord. And it says, if you humble him, he will exalt you. And I love this, this scripture from Ezekiel. And I will give them one heart, a new spirit I will put in them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Imagine that, create a new heart. They will walk in my statutes, keep my rules, obey them, and they will be my people and I will be their God. You know, the word of God says, that God desires that we become his children. And it comes out of a heart that is softened, that recognizes that God is there, that reaches out, and that humbly receives his word. So today, Jesus desires a heart that is softened and humbled towards him. So then we have a second, we have a second ground, a second heart, a, a second reception of God's word. Other seed fell on a shallow soil with underlying rock. Um, and some other translations says rocky soil. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. And you see Christ's interpretation of this. this the rocky soil represent, represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems are persecuted for believing God. When Christ was on earth, you know, great crowds followed him. 
you know, and, and even some of the crowds, they wanted to do miracles like Jesus. Like they were, they were into very much the, um, of the show, the demonstration of power that was going on. Uh, and, um, and as Jesus taught them what it meant to be in the kingdom of God, you know, it talked about sacrifice. It talked about following him no matter what. And um, some of them found Jesus' words hard, and some of them walked away, especially when they didn't understand. They walked away from Jesus. They'd been following him, and then they walked away. Their faith was shallow. And in actually in Palestine, um, there's in many areas, there's under, when we talk about that underlying rock, it's actually, um, there's a layer of lime rock, uh, of, and, and what ends up happening is that in some places, the, the earth, the soil on top is very shallow. And therefore, the plants may sprout, but they don't take root. In John 6, 66, 68, um, it said, From this time, many of his disciples, those that followed Jesus, turned back and no longer followed him. And Jesus looked at his disciples and said, You want to leave me too? And Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And I, and I think right now, when we think about the times we're in, and we think about our present day, our future, I want to be close to the one that holds eternity in his hands. Who will I go to? I want my roots to grow down deep in Jesus. I want to hear his words. And here are some of the words of Jesus when he talks about going deep, going deeper. Mark 8, 34 and 35 says, Then calling the crowd to join his disciples. So here it is, invitation to follow. If anyone wants to be my follower, he must give up his own way, your own way. Take up your cross, which means to submit to him and follow. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. You know, it's amazing. You know, when we, we hit some hard times, we kind of look at what do we need to hold on to? We clutch hard to those things that maybe give us a sense of security. But the, at the end of all things, the only thing secure really is our faith in Christ. And it says, but if you give up your life for my sake, the sake of the good news that Christ loves us, died for us, uh, then we will save our lives. Jesus desires a heart that is fully surrendered to him. He wants a softened heart, a humble heart. He wants a heart that is surrendered to him. Now, ground with thorns. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants, so they produced no grain. Uh, the seeds that fell among the thorns represent others who hear God's word, but too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life, the lure of wealth, the desire for other things. So no fruit is produced. It, you know, life, we, we often talk about life being busy. And I think sometimes even within the church, we have programs and programs and activities. And then, uh, you know, through, um, through the community, we have programs and activities. In our own life, we have a schedule and it fills up so quickly. And the question is, is there space for God? Um, or do those things actually choke the life out of him? You know, uh, when you get a lot of things, and I'm going to speak just personally, when there's a lot of things to do and to look after, um, sometimes I worry about it. Perhaps you worry about things too. We have so many things on our list, so many things to keep together. And, um, and it could have to do with money. It could have to do with just, and it could be a lot of good things. And it could be today that even in the circumstances we're in, that your level of worry and mine have been higher than normal. And that would be a pretty, uh, I think that'd be a pretty normal thing we find across. And yet in the midst of all our circumstances, our busyness, our things, our priorities. And, and actually it was interesting this morning, Jennifer read this scripture uh, as one of those shared. Matthew 6, 33, 34, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness means moving into a right relationship. And all these things will be added to you. You know, put God first and everything else will fall into place. Now, when you think about that, it, it is um, our creator who put us on this earth to begin with, 
has plans for us. Wouldn't it seem right that we should have him as first? And then it says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus desires to have first place in our hearts. Lord, soften my heart. I humble myself. Lord, I want to surrender to you. I want to grow deep in you. And Lord, I want you to be first. Father, be first in my life. I may have many, lots of good things, but I need to listen. I was on a call this past week, actually, with um, a number of Christian leaders. And um, it was a lot, of, a lot of discussion around activities and programs and so on and things that needed to change. And in the middle of our conversation, someone said, shouldn't we pray? Shouldn't we take time to listen? Are we interested in what God has to say or just maintaining the program? So I think as we move forward in this time, even as we're, we're, we're kind of uh, even opening, you know, doing church differently, um, reaching out to those, reconnecting, let's do so prayerfully, asking God to give us wisdom to lead us as, as we move forward. Mark 4, 1 to 20. The next one talks about fertile ground. And of course, uh, the seed had to fall someplace where it was going to take root. And of course, it hit the fertile soil and it sprouted and grew and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's words and produce a harvest 30, 60, or even 100 times. We talked a little bit about the heart that can receive God's word. It's a humble heart. It's a surrendered heart. And it's a heart that's willing to put God first. And now we're ready to receive God's word. But first we have to hear it. You know, we have to hear. Are we willing to listen? And you know, the reason I ask people to kind of take out a notebook or have a pen there is because perhaps in the next week, it would be good for us to pray, read scripture, and to record some of our thoughts of how God is speaking to us through his word, what he's bringing to mind. And even to say, Lord, Lord, I just don't want to hear, but I want to listen, Lord. I'm not want to be just a spectator. I really want to engage in conversation with you. And then the second one is we must receive it, the word of God. The beginning, of course, is to receive Christ as our Savior. It could be that we need to be, as believers, at a point where we need to repent. We need to change direction. We need to remind, say to the Lord, Lord, I haven't been listening. I haven't been reading your word. Again, I speak these things for, for myself as well as others that may, may find they fit. And then we must put it into action. What does God want us to do? How does he want us to live? Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. This is what it means to come into that relationship with Christ. When he reigns in our lives, when his kingdom is within our lives. So when we think of kingdom, think of the reign of Christ in our lives. Think about us coming into a relationship where he's going to guide us. And Ephesians 3, 19 20 says, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. You know, when we come into that faith relationship with Christ, walking with him, what is very apparent is the love that he has for us. It says, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. You see, this is living in a kingdom way. This is allowing God to use us as his vessels of love towards others. This means that the impact in other people's lives with the message of Christ can, can work very well. And in 20, it says, Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power and work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Um, 
last week we have a small group um we've been praying um for a couple weeks for a, a family and uh and for a where there's sickness but also where we we, we want to share the good news and we had uh, a lady from our group who's been sharing uh with in a and really loving this this other family and we heard this past week that they received christ this is this is multiplication this is where the word of god has entered our lives in such a strong way that we're living day to day with Christ. We are seeking his word and we're also sharing that word, not just with that telling people that Christ is Lord, but living the love that Christ has placed within us because of that relationship. Jesus wants us to listen, receive, and put his word into action in kingdom living in a life where Christ reigns. It begins with a humble acknowledgement that, Lord, I need you first. Take your place in my life. You notice I didn't put here in kingdom programs or a lot of activities, but in kingdom living, how we deal with our children, how we treat our spouses, how we love our neighbors, how we reach out to those we don't even know, the notes we send. So, remember I talked about this scripture having three parts? We've done two parts. We did the story that Jesus told, the parable, and we had his explanation in scripture. And in the in-between part, the little aside that he did with his, uh, uh, with his disciples, was he, um, he referred back to Old Testament scripture, which talked about people not listening. In other words, they hear the stories, they hear the parables, they hear the message, they hear the word of God, but nothing comes of it. And, um, you know, sometimes our hearts can become so hardened that we don't hear. Sometimes our hearts become hardened towards people who we know, and even our family. And when they come into the room and they speak to us, it's like water off our back. We don't hear. Today, Maybe God is, has prodded your heart. It's interesting. When Christ left, he said, I'm going to leave my Holy Spirit. And um, in John 16, 8, which is the middle verse there, you can see when he, it says, when he will come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin and of God's righteousness and of coming judgment. So it's interesting. The Holy Spirit um, begins prodding people's hearts. See, God wants people to come. So the Holy Spirit, and today maybe God has been, um, as we've been talking about Scripture, perhaps God, and I can't say every home or every heart, but God does. And maybe today he's been just kind of pulling, pulling at your heart. And you're starting to think, does God really love me? Does God really have a plan for me? Does, does God really want to direct my life that pull that you're feeling if that is what it is this morning is the holy spirit and he's saying i want to come in and have a relationship with you i want to help you move forward because i have plans for you and um you know without the holy spirit we really can't grasp what, what god has for us first corinthians two fourteen says the man without the spirit does not accept things that come from the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Today, if the Holy Spirit's been prodding, then open yourself to him and let him begin explaining what he'd like you to do. John 16, 12 to 15 talks about the fullness of that relationship of the Holy Spirit. It says, there is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. That means that Christ will walk with us day by day. When we receive him as our Savior and Lord, he comes in in his Holy Spirit and indwells us, and he will walk with us each day and guide us in his truth. And it says, he will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he's heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. And this is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whenever he receives from me. Having the Holy Spirit within us is having Christ with us, God himself, who desires uh, to walk with us.
So as we, um, as we go into, as we finish the scripture, um, remember the farmer is someone who shares the word of God. And some, some commentators believe he was referring to himself, Jesus. So today, through Jesus' words of the parable, we are hearing about the kingdom of God. We're hearing that he loves us, that he came to save us, and he came to reign in our lives, to fill us, to give us a life that counts, and to use us in loving others for the sake of Christ and sharing the good news. So, you know, today um, I would ask you to think about eternal things. I would ask you to think about kingdom. And if you're thinking about it, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit at work. And I guess right now is what soil are we? What ground are we? Will we receive and let Christ begin to grow in our lives? Will we open our hearts to him and seek him? And as believers, this may be coming back, setting Christ as priority. And perhaps if we've never received Christ, it would be saying, Lord, I'm ready right now. I receive your word and I want to follow you no matter what and make you first in my life. The, the song we're going to finish with is, um, and I'd like you just to, you know, prayerfully as you listen to the word, it says, he knows my name. Isn't it interesting? The one who um, is calling out to us, and we may not even think he's there, is the one who knows our very name from the very beginning. And um, I think we, we played this in prayer meeting the other Wednesday night, and I just had to go find it there and get the copyright for it so we could play it this morning. So I'd like you to listen to this or sing it uh, uh, as we come into this, and, and just think about what has God been speaking to me this morning? How do I need to receive his word? Am I willing? and realizing that he knows our name and cares for us.